I don't know. I just know that at that age, that was super inappropriate. And <laughs> <laughs> story of your life. At That's... any age, you could say Ben is being inappropriate about something, but it's an appropriate <laughs> level of inappropriate. Right. Oh, this is this is your sniping. Well, you're a terrible father. I'm sorry. How did that? How, how did, did that equate? Get... Where did that? Did that? Yeah, exactly. People were still doing Olympic games, but they were really stupid Olympic games. Like, <laughs> uh, what's it? Curling? They were doing canned curling and so or canned goods curling, and so they'd have like a can of green beans, and they'd roll it really gently, and then the other people over there with brooms, like trying to get it into the, <laughs> the little lane or whatever. His response was, you want to go, bro? <laughs> so naturally, I was like, where are we going? Where are we going? We go into the store? And he said, Paris. And I was like, it's a date. I've always wanted to go to France. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about something that affects probably the majority of the world. Social media, whether it's old school MySpace, if you're still on that. I'm sorry. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, even LinkedIn. And now that new thing that all the cool kids are doing, TikTok. All those different platforms that are being used. We're going to talk about how they're being used, how they affect us, why they affect us that way. And then ultimately, what can we do to make it better? What can we do to make it a better experience? The first thing we start with is why do we do it anyway? Why do we have this drive to want to connect to each other? That's what we have for you today. Let's jump in. Right now, the real estate market is hot, which is kind of surprising, but also not. If you're stuck inside all the time, you start to realize just how much space you don't have and you might want. The trouble is, when you get to that spot, who do you talk to? Who do you call? What if you could know one of the top 50 realtors in Austin, Texas, and more importantly, one of my favorite human beings of all time? Well, guess what? You can. His name is Barrett Raven. And he is one of the top 50 realtors in Austin. He works at Realty Austin. He has been my realtor and one of my best friends for the last four years. If you're looking for somebody who not only can meet you where you are, but also answer a million questions because he has actually been a middle school teacher, so he's used to it, you should reach out to Barrett and his team at BarrettRaven at RealtyAustin.com. That's B-A-R-R-E-T-T-R-A-V-E-N at realtyaustin.com. Have you ever been like, man, I need to read that book. And then you throw out the excuse that you don't have any time. Well, lucky you, we're now all in quarantine and have way too much time on our hands. And we realize that was never a valid excuse to begin with. But sitting and reading a book may actually take up more of your time. And considering you're listening to this podcast, you might be the type of person that prefers audiobooks. I know I do. I like to be able to multitask, you know, like taking a shower and listening to Extreme Ownership or cooking and listening to The Flip Side, both of which are books that we've mentioned on this podcast. So if you're interested in trying that out, no strings attached, you want to get a free 30-day trial to just see what it's like, I guess, listen and hear what it's like, go to audibletrial.com forward slash MBP. That will get you access to a free 30-day trial, our gift to you. So if you like listening to this podcast, you'll probably like listening to books. Just remember to go to audibletrial.com forward slash MBP. So first thing is first, why is social media even a thing? Uh, If that's what we're talking about today, then let's figure out why are we really talking about it? It is something that affects a bunch of people worldwide. I wouldn't say everybody because there's always going to be that one person who refuses to get on Facebook, Instagram, whatever, or people that frankly don't even know what those are. They're probably in North Korea. But nonetheless, we want to start with the basics. Why do we even care about this topic? Why are we even talking about this? Uh, Quite frankly, why do people use it so much? I wanted to read you something to kick things off from an article called Why We Are Wired to Connect on the website Scientific American. And it comes from a question from Mind Matters editor Gareth Cook. And the answer is from a scientist and author named Matthew Lieberman. The question is this. You argue that our need to connect socially is, quote, powerful, but just how powerful is it? Listen to what he has to say. Different cultures have different beliefs about how important social connection and interdependence are to our lives. In the West, we like to think of ourselves as relatively immune to sway of those around us while we each pursue our personal destiny. 
pause. That's like when people say, I just got to do me. I'm going to do me. You do you, I'll do me. That's what he's talking about here. But to continue what he said, I think this is a story we like to tell ourselves rather than what really happens. Across many studies of mammals, from the smallest rodents all the way to us humans, the data suggests that we are profoundly shaped by our social environment and that we suffer greatly when our social bonds are threatened or severed. When this happens in childhood, it can actually lead to long-term health and educational problems, and we may not like the fact that we are wired such that our well-being depends on our connection with others, but the facts are the facts. So... If it doesn't make sense why we need connection, start with considering yourself as an infant and think about how dependable you were on your mother and father. So we're kicking things off with talking about how great our need is for social connectivity, only to realize that at the time of this recording, we are all social distancing and most of our connections are coming over the interwebs, which in many cases is social media. So Ben, why do people not like social media when it first kicked off? Why were people apprehensive to it? Why did they say, you know, get away from it? Don't be on there. No, you can't create a MySpace account. No, you can't create a Facebook account until you're 18. You remember those days. Dude, I remember my mom. Like, that was the conversation was, oh, mom, I want to make a MySpace. Everybody at school is making a MySpace. This was, I think. Everybody's doing it, mom. When was, when, when was, when did MySpace take off? I don't even. MySpace? I might do a quick Google search. I don't even remember what year that was. I th- I'm pretty sure that because, dude, I remember being in middle school coding Ooh. in HTML like my MySpace like song. Champ. It was, uh, <laughs> oh, it was super risque, man. And mi- I think it was middle school. Uh, it's August 1st, 2003. And then, and then, yeah, so that makes sense because it, it came out about the time when I was like in middle school. And it became like a fad in the in the high school. You had like your top eight, dude. I remember. You don't remember you could put songs on your profile. Do you remember that? Oh heck yeah! And then you could like put like a playlist that would yeah. just shuffle in all day long. You want to know what my MySpace song was in middle school? Oh lord! For the sake of entertainment purposes, yes, one thousand <laughs> percent. I remember it, dude. It was it was um, it was "Grind on Me" by Pretty Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first one i'm crying oh, dude that was the first one and then, i don't like, even remember what mine were it had to be like red jumpsuit apparatus or something <laughs> or like yeah it was too. i think the first one was because i thought it was like super edgy and cool right like ooh, i've got i think it was like pretty ricky or who sings that is that is that i think it's pretty ricky maybe Bro, I, have, I, don't, I don't i don't i don't even remember it was on your myspace profile wouldn't, wouldn't you know i don't know i just know that at that age that was super inappropriate and <laughs> <laughs> story of your life at That's... any age you could say ben is being inappropriate about something but it's an appropriate <laughs> level of inappropriateness right it's not like inappropriate it's just not appropriate it's like a that's what she said joke you know in certain circles it might be over the line but most people are kind of like eh. yeah like i know my i know my audience there's definitely times when i'll bite my tongue but uh um no <laughs> yeah, that was just i don't dude I, I, <laughs> I could let you inside of here oh my gosh um the, oh yeah by the way for this is going to be on youtube as well so for those listening this won't apply to you but um there's not a door behind me because i'm waiting on a replacement for a door to come in i've ordered that door uh and we're just waiting for it to come in because there was like uh this door was like <laughs> fall it was falling apart so we had to get a new door uh so there's not a door narnia, behind me yeah narnia just stuck it right through <laughs> So, doors. Yeah, there's just a there's just a hole in the wall behind me where a door should be. So <laughs> anyhow. I remember for my parents, it was like, you know, the you never know who's watching and what if what if the per like now we call it catfishing, but back then it was just the the long version of like, you know, what if the person that you're trying to connect with, how do you know that that's really them? Stranger danger. Yeah, big stranger danger. Yeah. Do they know the password? My password, now that I'm 31 years old, I think it's safe to go ahead and say what my password was, but it was Petunia. Petunia. And and if uh, (laughs) people didn't know the password, 
you weren't getting my hand to hold to walk to wherever you wanted to go, Mr. Creepy in the white van. Yeah, it was that. And like the extension of that was, they're going to steal your identity. Why are you posting all these pictures about everything that you do? And so my way to kind of placate my mom and dad was to post pictures of scenery. So I had a lot of like black and white photos. And, stuff. and this was back when you had to go through the arduous process of having hopefully a digital camera not a film camera but a digital camera and then you had to plug it in you had to upload all the pictures uh, pray that your computer didn't crash mid upload and lose mm-hmm. all of your stuff so um yeah they were they were all about like stay safe don't do it and now my mom's on facebook and she's posting pictures of all the grandkids and pictures of herself and posting statuses constantly so i i think that it has to go has to do with kind of what we talked about on the last episode which is the or two episodes ago sorry um early adopters and like the innovators early adopters majority or whatever and laggards still love that word but nonetheless i think it was just kind of that the the difference between the early adopters versus the majority so that was a good time and and, and and there's almost i don't know if this is the same for you but like the laggards and the late adopters There's always a difference in, like, you know who came in late to the game because they're always, like... Asking you how to do HTML codes? No, not even (laughs) that. Like, almost to the point where it's... They're almost inappropriately share too much. Does that make sense? Like... (laughs) Like they're overcompensating? No, not even over... Just they're oversharing. Like mom walked down the hall well, I, or like I mean, it, <laughs> I mean like they they overcompensate for being late so they overshare like that's the that's the domino effect right and then they're right, like, right right oh is this how you do it do <laughs> i i had coffee today it's like if you said that in any normal context to anybody you know hey did you know that i put a straw in my coffee <laughs> why i don't Thanks. care at all thank you so much for enlightening me about your very boring day oh my goodness or it's I like just, my dog my dog sat today i was watching youtube yesterday this reminded me of it was a, a youtuber he was going around he was going around a college campus and uh he has he's got 10 million uh followers on instagram stuff like that right only like just only 10 million yeah so like big following <laughs> but it was so funny because he was walking so it, he did a, a bit where he asked his fan base hey leave in the comment sections like things that you'd want me to do so his fans were like hey walk up to people and show them like your follower account and just see how people respond and the overwhelming majority of these people because like if you walked up to me and were like hey this is my instagram following and like me as a i don't even what generation are we we're not x but we're not i don't know i don't i think we're technically generation z or i don't know we're technically on the old end of boomers. We're boomers. No, no, we're not. Our <laughs> parents are boomers. They're baby boomers. <laughs> well, they so boom wh- babies. Whatever we are. So he'd walk up to these people and he'd and he'd show them. Oh, I've got ten million followers. If you showed that to me, like knowing what I know, I'd be like, oh my gosh, that's a lot. Like, holy cow, that's really good. <laughs> yeah. But overwhelmingly, this response from people on a college campus like college kids i would assume between probably the ages of 18 and 25 the majority of them and they were overwhelmingly okay and he's like yeah i have 10 million followers and they're like all right great that's good for you congrats <laughs> they'd be like that's not exciting and they'd be like sure i got to go bye <laughs> Do they just not have, do they not understand what that means or do they have more? Like what was the, the I don't know. Like I just, I thought that was a cool, I thought it was a very interesting perspective because I don't know. Like I think it was a combination of people didn't realize the achievement that that was crossed with like, okay, if a millionaire is standing next to me or a billionaire standing next to me, that doesn't affect me. Like, you've got a ton of money. That's great. That doesn't do anything for me. <laughs> yep. So it's kind of like, why should I care? <laughs> to answer your question, we kind of tangent it off there. Uh, reactions to social media when it first came out. I mean, my mom was the same way, dude. My parents were... Um, my mom was, you're going <laughs> to you're gonna get kidnapped. <laughs> That's the first somebody's oh, yeah. gonna find Absolutely. you and You will you. be kidnapped. There's no like you might be. It's like you will be. Kidnapped. No, yeah, you're hundred percent. You get social profile. media, anything on the internet, you're gonna get kidnapped. Um, For sure. The big thing with my 
parents where it was kind of the same thing that happened like with video games, right? Was go outside. Um, so, you know, at the time social media started to come out, we've got really, if, as far as I can remember, MySpace was like the, the flagship there. And then yeah. like Facebook came after MySpace and then Instagram came after Facebook shortly after. And then Twitter came out at some point. Um, it was moreover for my parents was like the aspect of like, go outside. Like you don't need to be, you know, we're in middle school, right? So there wasn't, I don't, I don't think I, like, I think I had the Nokia cell phone. You remember the indestructible one that you could drop from space? Oh and, uh, yeah. Yeah. So like mom said, was that the yellow and black one? Uh, mine was blue and gray. Okay. I think it was okay. like the, you know, the Nokia, like it's the brick. <laughs> Well, I'm I'm thinking of the one that was like a construction yellow or whatever, and they catered it to people who do construction and manual labor and stuff like that. Oh no 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 no! I'm thinking of like the the uh, like Nokia. I think it was singular wireless. Oh, that's a blast from the past. Oh uh, but, dang! May as well say Blockbuster while we're at it. Man, Rip. so my mom sent me to school like in middle school, like in order to call her at the end of the day, like because I had like football practice at the end of the day and and a bunch of stuff in middle school. So she'd send me with her cell phone, and but like her cell phone was like the little you know, three button text message. You couldn't be on Facebook. So like there was no way to like be on really Facebook without being at the computer. And my mom was already like super anti computer growing up. So, um, it was kind of like I had to like sneak it, but I mean, just super apprehensive to it. I would assume it was just like a lot of parents growing up. It was, it was new. It was scary. It was technology that, I mean, social aspect, your parents always, you, you grew up with your parents saying, don't talk to strangers. And then all of a sudden yeah. we're talking to all the strangers and we're getting in cars with strangers. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and now we're arguing with strangers who have no idea what our life is like, mm -hmm. or that's, for that matter. Right. And this is a mild tangent. It's like when I posted a video of me sniping people in call of duty, immediately everybody's like this camper, this guy, and people don't know what camping is. It's where you sit in one spot and you just hold that position the entire game. For the record, you can't in Battle Royale. Not really. But anyway, from a 50-second clip, all of them are like, camper, you're a camper. You're the problem, that sort of thing. And so it's like, man, I, I'm not going to argue with you. I don't even know you. You don't know my life. That You got a 50-second clip of an entire game and you're already judging. Calm down. They're like they're like attacking your character and like calling you a terrible oh, human being. Oh, for sure. You're an awful human being. How dare you? I <laughs> hope your family falls off. It's just like, really? Yeah. Like, dude, it's like it's I said in the, in the video clip. game episode, it's like, oh, th this is this is your sniping? Well, you're a terrible father. I'm sorry. <laughs> how did that? How, how did, did that equate? Get... Where did that? Did that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Man. So for, for all the things that social media can be good and bad let's talk about some goods that come from it and how the use of in general we'll say social media and then we can break down some specifics uh but how has its use evolved over time i think as a as a general whole we've become super dependent i think as society like i i don't think again we talked to our generation so our generation we're uh z um what's the generation that everybody likes to blame everything on uh us no but it's not generation z what is it um is it generation z brother uh yes 100 <laughs> percent. okay so i got tired of people blaming millennials and i was like i'm not millennials that was it that was like, the term i was looking for millennials that's what We're i said millennials, I said millennials and Did, you said no oh i wasn't listening <laughs> <laughs> but i think I think our generation has become so dependent on it that like it's it, there's there's good and there's bad. So we're talking about the good. Um, I think it's connected us in a way that obviously we previously weren't connected before. Information's traveling. One of the big things for me that I like about social media is it allows me to really challenge myself. And that's kind of a it's kind of a tricky uh, that's kind of a tricky thing to do because a lot of time when you get on social media you end up comparing your life to that of everybody that you're seeing right oh they're doing this oh they have this oh they have they have this 
Um, and so if you can differentiate the fact that everybody's lives are different and how you're doing life is going to be different from how somebody else is doing life and that's okay. And there's no really right or wrong way to do it. It's however you decide you want to attack it. Um, it can inspire healthy lifestyle changes. Like for me, um, you know, that's where I get a lot of workouts. I get workouts from Pace Facebook. I'll come across something and it'll be, I follow a lot of workout pages and it'll be, oh, you know, this is a half hour workout that's really good, you know, and I'll look at it and I'll say, oh, that's really cool. I'll do that. So um, I think it can, it can inspire lifestyle changes, whether, whether physical, whether, you know, in relationships, um, you know, you, you, there's a lot of creativity and there's a lot of ideas out there uh, people, everybody thinks differently. So being able to collaborate and, and, you know, see what other people are thinking, what other people are doing and, Oh, how can I apply this to my own life? How can I better myself? So in that aspect, I think it can inspire, um, healthy lifestyle changes. I think the difference in what you were talking about, you know, from like a comparison that leads to ultimately kind of a jealousy and that sort of thing. And like, Oh man, I'm not like that person. Yeah. You know? Um, I think it's perspective. So I've told Elizabeth before, comparison is not the thief of joy. <clears throat> Your perspective of another person can be the thief of joy. So a lot of times I will compare to give myself a, a better perspective, mm -hmm. meaning if I'm getting butt hurt about my life situation, I try to really think through, okay, but this person, like right now, <clears throat> we still have our jobs, we still have an income. And sometimes I get really frustrated about being stuck at home all the time with a three year old and a 10 month old. But the reality is, other people have it so much worse. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I think that, like you're saying, uh, the the good one of the good things that can come from it, yeah, inspire healthy lifestyle changes. Uh, for being a parent, a lot of parents will share ideas of things that they've been doing with their kids during quarantine to like mm -hmm. help each other out. Yeah. Um, there are different little projects. I think that what John Krasinski does with some good news is really helpful because it, it really does encourage me personally to see even like the, um, gosh, what was it? I think it was on TikTok. They still like, people were still doing Olympic games, but they were really stupid Olympic games. Like, <laughs> uh, what's it, curling? They were doing canned curling and so or canned goods curling. And so they'd have like a can of green beads and they'd roll it really gently. And then the other people over there with brooms, like trying to get it into the, <laughs> the little lane or whatever. And then one of the games was uh, Hungry Hungry Hippos. And they had a bunch of baskets and buckets and the balls in the middle. And they'd try to scoop them and stuff. Yeah. So th there are times that I look at other people and the comparison is for for me. And I'm, I'm not saying that everybody has this comparison. I, I tend to tilt a little bit more optimist than anything, but for me, I look at that and go, you know, I really could choose to have a better attitude about this whole thing. Yeah. And so I, I think that that's helpful. I think also it can create social support. So when we were going through stuff with Lily being in the hospital, I posted on Facebook and Instagram and the amount of overwhelming support that then led to phone calls, text messages, a GoFundMe for us to help cover medical bills, um, meals being brought to, I think we paid for two meals in the wow. entire time we were in the hospital for a week and a half. Wow. Um, and we're also the people, I just want to say this because somebody needs to hear this. Do not reject somebody's gift because it, it's okay to say like at first, like, no, nah, man, I got it. You know, you don't need to pay for that. But if they persist, you, you don't, you don't know what's going on in their life that has compelled them to, to want to offer. And I say that because I also have been on the giving end where somebody is rejected. And I, being a, a believer, a Christian that prays, I felt like God was telling me, you need to go give this to this person now. And when I did that, I felt like it was robbing me of joy of giving. If you've ever given somebody something, it's it's really awesome. That feeling of like, I got to have a positive impact in that person's life. So I'm of the the side of things where it's just, say like, if you want to say like, you don't have to, you know, it's okay. Really? Like we got it. Do that one time. But then after that, if they persist, just say thank you. Cause you never know what's going on. People are, we're here to help each other out. So trying to shut down the cycle of helping each other out is not helping. Um, so we, we really appreciated the social support that we got from people. Um, that also kind of adds in one of the other notes I have here is 
getting the word out faster about things, which I know you, you and I both agree, agree with that. There is a time, and this is a, an example of negative evolution, <laughs> but news, you can get news out a lot faster. The The bad part about that is you can get news out a lot faster. <laughs> so before, before anybody has a chance to fact check anything, now you got like, <laughs> I knew this was a joke and I thought it was clearly a joke, but I posted a picture of like, a lion breaks out in Moscow, Russia, you know, terrorizes the town. And it, to me, the framing on the picture and everything looked fake. Next thing I know, I get a notification that Facebook has tagged your, you know, your post as false information. Oh, no. And I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh. I've been put on the list, guys. You've been you know? put on the list. So if you want to talk about fake news, I was that person. And I thought it was a joke. I thought it was funny, but I guess other people took it seriously. So I'm sorry about that. But yeah, you can definitely get the word out about things. I mean, when weather is happening, I know we had a tornado warning here not too long ago. And it was like at 5 a.m. or something, 530 in the morning. And we had people like blow up our phones and say, like, you need to get up and get in a closet um, because they knew about it. So um I think it can be really helpful for getting the word out about things very quickly. For one, I mean, Kobe Bryant's death. Everybody knew about that instantly because of Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, I didn't know why people started saying hashtag girl dad. But then I found out, oh, that was because of Kobe. That was like something that he talked about all the time. I think the ability to get information out quickly is is good and it's convenient and it's can be super helpful helpful i think it can also be a super bad thing like in that moment like when when the kobe stuff happened like in that in in that moment now i get your high profile celebrity you know that comes with the territory but it's almost like the world probably knew before his family did and that just kind of hurts my heart that yeah you know think about that situation you're you know driving to work and you're listening to the radio and you hear, oh, you know, your spouse just, you know, passed in a helicopter wreck or there was a helicopter accident. You don't know how, like, it'd be terrible hearing that through, like, a social media outsource or a news source versus, like, coming to you first. So I think, like, yeah, getting the word out faster can be good, but I think it's also created, I think, more negative than good sometimes. I think like what you're saying at a more relatable level is like a pregnancy uh, for us. When we were telling people, w there were certain people we wanted to tell first and, and tell them before we posted it to social media or anything like that. Same mm -hmm. thing with the miscarriages. Like we wanted to tell our parents first. We wanted to tell them like face to face if possible. And if not possible, we wanted to tell them over the phone. If we had gone and just posted on Facebook, my parents would have like disowned me. They would have been so angry and like, why would, why would you do that? Do we not mean enough to you? I don't understand. Right. Like, why didn't so, it come to us first? Like 100%. So that's, yeah, that's definitely getting information. I, I It's weird because I think that there's like a, a two way or like a two sides to a coin for each of these, you know, um, getting news out, getting information out. Great. But is it false information? Yeah. Um, comparison. <laughs> in and of itself can be good and bad. We've already uh, explained the the good side of it, which is I can look and go, Micah, you really need to just shut up and stop whining because <laughs> you have it a lot better than 11 other people. I think at the same time where we could send birthday wishes and congratulations or happy birthdays, or I just said birthday wishes, birthday wishes, pregnancy, congratulations, wedding congratulations, things like that. At the same time, the opposite side of that coin is bullying. It's uh, in the adult version of that. I'm going to put this out there. The adult version of that is when people start arguing about political views, how to handle COVID. <laughs> do you wear a face mask or not wear a face mask? Six feet or two feet, you know, whatever. When people start bickering like that over social media, you really think something's going to be solved over social media? Anyway, I, I think that the bullying for me personally, I vividly remember over AOL Instant Messenger talking about old school. Um, I remember some guys from middle school sending me messages that were like, you're gay. Why are you so gay? 
do you like other guys? Why are you so stupid? I can't even stand you. You're annoying. And they're, they're just messages just popping up on my screen. And so I have firsthand knowledge of how bullying goes over the interwebs. Mm -hmm. Um, I I think that just as we continue through this social media type of connectivity where we're interacting a lot, just remember that we should always care about the humanity of the other person that we're talking to. Mm. So if you don't, if you don't agree, ask for more information. Don't, don't attack personally. If you call somebody an idiot, that's a personal attack. You can attack the information and then they're probably not going to get as defensive. Oh, where did you find that information? Can you send me a link? I'd love to read more. Mm -hmm. Not that sounds stupid. And I bet you can't even find the information for that. It's there's a little bit of a difference there. (laughs) You're an idiot and your mom smells bad. (laughs) It's like, it's like Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Your mother was a hamster and your father smelt of elderberry. There you go. That's it. <laughs> you know, I think so uh, there's something to be said for you know, it's kind of a double-edged sword, right? Now, for those um for those listening right now, uh, my I didn't plan on this. My lawn guys are here, so if you hear like lawn equipment in the background, I apologize, but uh it is what it is and we're just going to move on through it. Um I got dogs and kids here, so at some point you'll probably hear one of them pipe up. Yeah. So something that I think it, it was it's a it's a double edged sword is I think that if we use it to the potential that it could be in a positive way. So by like creating back to your point of creating social support, you know, if you're responsible with it and you are using it, you know, you're using social media as a platform to encourage to help, uh, you know, provide hope. Just be positive and like contribute positively to society like that's you know that's where i think social media signs is it has this this really niche capability to bring people together from all over the place and if all of those people are like the dad gaming group micah like it's the most positive place i think (laughs) i've found on facebook related to gaming or on the internet related to gaming um it's just you can feel the vibe from from the people there and like that's what i wish social media was as a whole is i feel like because you are behind a keyboard there's no sense of um what's the term i'm looking for there's no consequence for what you say um no repercussions there's yeah. no repercussions so you can just like mouth vomit anything and you can say anything to anybody and you don't ever have to talk to any of these people you don't have to think about how it affects their you know how it affects them how it affects their family you know what what they may be going through how you're contributing to what they're going through like um there's so many different aspects of that um it makes it makes me think about speaking of that that sniping video one of the guys got on there and was like you know, this is trash. This is garbage. And so I wrote back and I said, thank you so much for your, con- your contribution to this post. It really makes my day so much better. <laughs> and just, uh, I remember he didn't say anything back, did he? No, no, no. This, this was definitely, this guy said it back oh. and uh, his response, <laughs> his response was, you want to go, bro? <laughs> so naturally I was like, where are we going? <laughs> where are we going? We go into the store. And he said, paris and i was like it's a date i've always wanted to go to france and then he didn't respond after that so yeah there's there's like zero repercussions to anything that people say at least rarely and so that's that's a big deal i I think what sucks most is that and i saw this with my middle schoolers uh it's very addictive yeah and yes it does happen to adults too it's very addictive and so when you have this addiction which I didn't do it this time, folks. You can thank me or hate me. I don't know. But I didn't pull up a a study as to why it's addictive and all that. But it is. And you can Google search why is social media addictive and and you'll find plenty of stuff. I'm I'm positive of it. It's like a there's like a dopamine rush associated. Yeah, dopamine rush. Yep. Yep. And and that can happen to a lot of things. Um, Yeah. It it could happen with sleeping and people get addicted to sleeping. I love sleeping. But I'm a parent and that makes perfect sense. But it's addictive. And the problem is when you constantly go to social media for any reason, but a lot of times it's approval. Talking about followers and talking about views Mm -hmm. on something and likes on something and that sort of thing. Uh, You go to that for approval. So then when you have other people starting to bash you and pick at you 
you allow your self-worth to be tied to that. And and you, you can't like, I, I don't know how else to say it. You cannot allow your self-worth to be tied to your social media status. Let it be tied to people who know you outside of just a post using the sniping example. Once again, instead of people seeing only a 50 second clip of what's going on in your real life, how about you go spend a few hours with them and let them see what your life is actually like. Let them know your weak points. That's what this whole podcast is about. Let them know what struggles you're facing and how you're overcoming them or how you're walking through them or how you're even beginning to address them. And then they'll have a better aspect of a better viewpoint of what your life is like. And you should do the same. Don't expect everybody to come to your house and ask you how you're doing and bring flowers when you're hurting. Do it for other people. That goes back to the whole gift thing. If somebody's trying to give you something, just say thank you and accept it because there will be one day when you're going to be doing the same for somebody else and you're really going to want to show them the love and how would that feel if they completely reject it and shut you off? Mm-hmm. I'm and off also- my soapbox. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> <laughs> there was, you know, it, it also, I think kids already have a tough time in school. Like already, but take out the aspect of social media. Kids are already having a tough time in school because you have kids who are nice and kids who are jerks. And those kids who are jerks and those kids who are nice are trying to figure out how to coexist <laughs> in in school. I mean, it's just the fact of the matter is that's that's just kind of the circle of life, right? So kids are already struggling with getting along. And then you add in this Big aspect. Fact. I'm sorry. Big facts. I middle school teacher. They're struggling for any number of reasons. I could give you plenty. Oh yeah. So they're already like struggling to exist, and then you, you start adding in the aspect of like social media, and then like cyberbullying. You know, I would argue that f- social media in our youth, I would say kids like high school and below, probably can cause more isolation and and more sadness than actual well being because you're already at such a fragile point in life you're trying to figure out who you are you're trying to figure out how you fit into this world and how to coexist with other individuals and then you've got this whole area on the internet that anybody can say anything to you at any given time and people do say whatever they think to you and it's just like words hurt like those things hurt and so as a kid you're already struggling and then you've got you know to worry about your your online presence and you have to worry about kids like picking like you know they're getting picked on 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 facebook and and you know saying kids get awful people get awful behind the keyboard they just get terrible uh i don't know i don't know what it is but but i would say that well you don't you've told me this before it's it's like people don't have someone in their face about to to punch them like you don't have to worry about a physical altercation taking place yeah because you're safe behind a screen and a keyboard in your own home Mm mm-hmm it's created this false false security yeah this false security because it's man, freedom of speech man i can say whatever i want yeah but you can say whatever you want out, but, but you know. in real life if you you know walk up to a guy and you'd be like you know he's with his wife and kids and you're like your family's stupid and your wife's you know an awful person you're probably going to get backhanded like that's just you, I hope it's just that. Yeah, it's just like if you were to do that, actually walk up to somebody and say something like that, where people do that on the internet all the time. Like, oh, look at this sniper clip. Oh, you're a terrible human being. I hope you trip and fall and die. Like, people actually say things like that. And it's like yep. you would never say that to never. somebody in public because <laughs> one of two things would happen. They would be like, Okay, which is how you should respond on social media. Okay, I don't know you. That doesn't mean anything to me. Or you're going to get hit, in which case you deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I uh, I think that one of the reasons the, the Dad Gaming Group is so positive uh, is because, and, and I, this is not, into, I know, Ben, you've complimented me for being like, you don't know what tired is or something like that (laughs) when I'm a parent and you're not. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope this doesn't come across that way to people that are listening. But I I think that when you become a parent, at least the majority of the time, some people just aren't really fit to be parents. But um, 
when you become a parent, I think that your perspective on what matters first uh, changes. And second, how you interact with people changes. I think that one of the reasons the dad gaming group is so positive and uplifting is because you got all these dads that have kids and they're like, yeah, what's, what is the point of bringing you down on the internet right now? Nothing. I think there was one sour post on the dad gaming when I posted my sniper clip there and like six other dads all backed me up and they're like, dude, where, you know, get off your high horse before you trample somebody and (laughs) Hey, quit, quit commenting. Like this guy's just trying to have fun on a video game. Uh, Leave him alone. Yeah. You know? And then another guy got on there and he's like, as a former military sniper, he was not camping. He was being a sniper. So shut up, you know? So it was just, it was funny to see the difference between the, the people that are not apparently, I guess, I don't know, dads. And then people that I know are dads for the most part. So Um, that that was a really interesting thing. I think that overall, the the biggest negative is when you constantly see, and this is the reason our whole podcast was created, was you see the highlight reel, this very small section of a highlight reel in somebody's life, and you think that that explains their whole being. Everything that they do, just they poop rainbows and unicorns and skittles, and you just think that they walk on water, and yet I would guarantee that if you met them, you will find that something is wrong in their life or they're facing some obstacle or they're they're having difficulties with their marriage or themselves or a friend or whatever. And, and it would shatter your view of them. Let's get real with ourselves and understand that people are going through all sorts of things, a myriad of things. And no, they're not going to share everything to social media. They're going to show you the best side of themselves. And that's all you're going to see. For, for the women out there, I know that um, Elizabeth has talked to me about this, how you know, you see all these pictures of women or videos of women and guys be like, oh my gosh, she's so hot. You don't know if that woman has an eating disorder. You don't know how much makeup she has on. You might be able to tell. I don't know. Um, you don't know what the rest of her life is like. Maybe she doesn't have a lot of friends because she's constantly working out and posting to social media and that's it. You have no idea. Guys, there are a multitude of things that we compare it to like, oh man, that guy's dirt bike, right? I wish I could. Like, I don't have time for that. Or yeah, I bet I would look like him if I didn't have two kids and didn't have responsibilities like I do and all that kind of stuff. And then I look at Chris Hemsworth and I'm like, well, he's got two boys and he looks like he does. And whatever. He, does. he also gets paid to work out and pretend he's people he's not. <laughs> <laughs> He has the socially acceptable personality disorder or multiple personality that's disorder. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so yeah, I think that um, just having an awareness of like how we view social media is very powerful and understand that they are human beings. And frankly, I think if the people listening to this podcast would start posting things when things are down, like, hey, I lost my temper the other day and I feel really bad for it. I know that if, if some of you listening to this have lost their, their temper on their child, you're going to be okay. Yeah. Ask for, ask for forgiveness from your child. Even if like for me, she's three and a half. I ask for forgiveness from her all the time. It's a little bit easier now. Cause I do it, you know, too often. Like baby, I didn't know that you wanted that toy. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Will you forgive me? Yeah. And then she gives me a hug. It's awesome. What do you think that does for our relationship as opposed to pretending that I have it right every time? So just remember that. Talk to each other about it. I want to know, uh, ben, how do you think social media has changed the way we interact as individuals, especially now? Now that we're in quarantine and we're all—that's yeah. all we do. You know, I think it. I think it's fundamentally changed the way people communicate. Um, I really do because I think that it's everything is so instantly accessible that I. I think that we've lost the sense of like human contact. Does that make sense? So human, like actual physical human interaction has become a thing that's like foreign to people. I'll use this as an example. I am a chatty Kathy. If you look at me in the grocery store, if I'm in line, if I'm stuck, bored, have nowhere to go and there's people to talk to. A board bin is a dangerous bin. A folks. board bin is a dangerous <laughs> bin. Don't look at me. I warn people. I'm like, listen, you looked at me. Like this isn't this isn't my fault. You're you looked this at me. And, you you and, looked at me. You looked at me. You initiated this conversation, whether you like it or not. Um, you know, it's it's 
I'll be in public and I'll just talk to people. And more often than not, I get this like raised eyebrows, kind of like deer in headlights, people staring at me for a split second because it's honestly, I read in people's eyes, like, why are you talking to me? Like that's legitimately like what I feel people are thinking sometimes when I start up conversation is, um, you know, they'll just, you get this crazy look and they're just like, and it's almost like they're listening to you because they don't want to be rude. But in the back of their mind, you can see the gears turning. Like, why are you talking to me? And yeah, then it's not, it's not normal for, for one, it's not normal. But I think that if you like broke down the, the percentage of people that wouldn't normally have a conversation like with a total stranger. Yeah. I think the majority of it is this isn't the norm anymore. Right. And then there's that small percentage that typically is like me when I'm just, I'm out of the house. There are not three different people talking to me and needing attention from me. Demanding I don't your wanna, time. <laughs> I don't want to talk to you. Not because I don't like you. You look like a nice person, but quite frankly, I just wanted to buy some candy for myself and not share it with anybody. And I don't want to talk to you right now. You know, so there's like that small segment yeah. of people yeah. that is just like, I just, I just, I go to the grocery store sometimes. True story. Elizabeth knows this. I go to the grocery store sometimes and I just walk the aisles and it's just like a brain break for me. I can be around people without talking to people. Yeah. So if, if Ben was in the grocery store with me, I would not have that. <laughs> that well, no, and here's the thing is like, you can like, there's social cues, right? Like, and that's what I think to answer your question. So this directly goes into answering your, your question is I think social media has changed the way we interact because it's we've lost like the human i feel like we've lost the human factor like we've lost the fact that like we're all people and and That's you can you can yeah. i can see like when i've when i have basically inserted myself into the life of somebody else whether they want to or not you know we're in line and i start talking to you um you can kind of see the look of i'm done with this conversation and so like as a socially responsible individual like i can like i'll start a conversation and i'll say what i need to say and if you want to talk to me then i absolutely will know if you want to talk to me if you don't want to talk to me i will absolutely usually know that you don't want to talk to me you can be nice i mean you can be nice by, by like you know your body language you can kind of turn your you can you can turn your body away you can start to you know as the conversation starts to wrap up you can kind of you know start moving away from the person physically start wrapping up the conversation social cues to wrap up the conversation i'm not well i was going to say i'm not an idiot I'm not a complete idiot. Um, and I can, yeah. I can, you know, I can read those social cues. I know when somebody wants to be left alone. And I feel like that's what social media has changed fundamentally for society is we are very quickly losing the human connection with people. That's fair to say. I, I, I don't disagree. I kind of go back to the perspective thing and um, it's, it's how you use it, how you view it, and how you use it. Yeah. So if you're viewing social media as a way to just stay connected to people that are, for us, three hours away from each other, uh, or people that are states away from each other, I know that you keep up with Bear probably through text message mm -hmm. and social media and then gaming. So mm -hmm. you got two, three virtual ways of staying connected. Mm. I, I talked to Bear on the on the phone though on a daily basis like that's a that's the oh. human there's human contact there too like i make sure to actually talk with him uh, okay so maybe that's yeah. a bad example for what i'm trying to say uh, <laughs> sorry okay. best friends aside if you're trying to just keep in touch with somebody uh just to see how their life is going we have friends that just moved from cedar park to ohio hmm. and uh you know we miss them quite a bit and so being able to see how they're doing without constantly like if I was texting everybody that I want to keep in touch with, I would literally not do anything all day long because yeah. all I'd be doing is texting. Yep. <clears throat> so it's an easy way to just kind of skim through and pick up on things. Um, the the beauty of the way the Facebook algorithms work is if something has a lot more interactions, it'll like post more often on your newsfeed mm -hmm. and be more prominent. Mm -hmm. So what that means is if somebody unfortunately what that means is if somebody puts a controversial post up and then everybody's commenting on it it'll show up at the top of your newsfeed. Right. but at the same time if somebody gets married if somebody has a birthday if somebody i mean facebook reminds me when people have birthdays birthdays 
uh, kids being born and stuff like that, or if they bought a house and everybody's liking it, or they got a dog and everybody's liking it, it'll pop up on your newsfeed. So it's a decent way to at least see those, those major markers in somebody's life. And, you know, if you do interact with them in person, you get to say, Hey, I, I saw that you guys just bought a house. Congrats. Yeah, you know, stay, I'll see people the that I barely ever talked to and I'll, I'll be like, Hey, I just saw that you bought a house on Facebook. Congratulations. And they don't think it's weird. They're like, Oh, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. If they thought it weird, it, it's weird. Then that's, weird to me because you're the one that posted it don't post to facebook (laughs) yeah like you posted to facebook why is it weird that i'm bringing it up yeah so uh kind of the there's two points we wanted to wrap this thing up with um one is how is it affecting our youth we kind of already talked about this and i wanted to to show a piece of information that is just factual from a study it's from an article titled how using social media affects teenagers go figure what a brilliant title for an article. And it's on the Child Mind Institute website, which I believe is in the UK, uh, because this study talks about a research study done in the UK. Young people report that there might be good reason to worry. Great, good news. <laughs> a survey conducted by the Royal Society for Public Health asked 14 to 24-year-olds, that's eighth grade roughly, Uh, up to post-college, like you just graduated in the UK, how social media platforms impacted their health and well-being. The survey results found that Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, that's like the main four, the quadfecta, not the trifecta, the quadfecta for teenagers up into young adult, all led to increased feelings of depression, anxiety, poor body image and loneliness. Mm. The question is, that's the end of the quote, but the question is how I think we've talked about it plenty on this episode, but the how is they, their view is my identity is totally wrapped up in these four different social media platforms. So when you start to see other people that you're like, Oh, they look better than me or like, man, that guy's got it together. Or especially as like a teenager, dude, that guy's girlfriend. Oh, I wish, but I'm like a six. So there's no way that's ever happening. And then you start to have that poor body image. And I'm trying to speak from a guy's perspective because I am a guy. So there are different aspects of how you use social media that can have a negative impact in your life. But I would argue that ultimately social social media is just a magnifying glass for your character to begin with and your, your own self view to begin with. So if you have a poor self view, it's going to be magnified when you're using social media. Mm. If you have a positive social self view, you, it's going to be magnified on social media. If you are a nice person, it's going to be magnified on social media. If you're a funny person, magnified if you're a total jerk because we try not to cuss on this uh podcast if you're a total jerk it will be magnified on social media so i i don't think that social media necessarily is inherently evil just like any piece of technology is is not inherently evil money is not inherently evil it's how you use it Mm. so my encouragement to everybody we're not even to the encouragement piece but my encouragement to everybody is just think about how are you using it? How are you viewing it? Yeah. Well, how can we be, I I guess the question here is how can we be more responsible with it moving forward? Right. And that's kind of the answer is just think about how you're using it, how you're viewing it. Like what are you putting out? Are you putting out more negative than positive? Well, then there's probably a reason why you're more sad and depressed. Yeah. Um, Or, whatever is causing you to be more sad and depressed is then causing you to post mainly negative things. Yeah. What you choose to focus on is what shockingly you're going to focus on. Yeah. You know, for, for me, I, I deleted Facebook, um, a while back cause I just needed, I wanted to see if it made a difference, just kind of the mental break. And I'll tell you, I like I have Facebook back in order to, you know, keep up stuff with the podcast and, you know, connect with uh people that we're talking to and connect with, 
fans and 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 friends and individuals who you know want to reach out and need somebody to talk to like that's why we're doing this that's what we're here for but having the like freedom of i don't know there was just something about not having social media something about not I don't know. It was for the first couple of days. It's almost like you have this detox. Yeah. It's like an addiction. Like you go to like pull your phone out and hit the app and you're just like, Oh wait, I deleted it. And then that kind of brings it into, into perspective. You're, you think to yourself, Oh my gosh, like I'm just going throughout my, throughout your day, you randomly pull out your phone. It has become habit to just, Oh, I'm going to check Facebook. I'm going to check Instagram. And it was just so nice for the time that I didn't have it you just are in the moment you're you're present and and as society moving forward with social media again i move back to i think that's what we're losing is people are losing the ability to be social like physically be be be, be social like in the moment you know person to person because everything is so digital now and especially during this covid stuff um you know i think as we move forward the world is going to fundamentally change based on what's happened during COVID. I think communication, a lot of businesses are going to realize that, you know, it's actually effective to have people work from home. So I think the economic of working from home and the economic of, of, of all this will, will, um, I think it's going to change how the world runs moving forward. But, you know, back to, I just, it, it, there was just something to be said for not being plugged into every everybody in the world. You know what I mean? It was just there was a piece yeah. to it that you know it's almost social media is you almost have to have it in order to communicate with some people, and it's just well because people expect it, right? Like yeah. to my example about being at the gym, you know, oh, I just saw y'all the the y'all bought a house. Yeah, it, it's like it'd be weird if you didn't know that I bought a house. Right. You know, that, that right. I actually got rid of Facebook for a year one time and, and Instagram all at the same time. I was actually off of Instagram for probably two years. Uh, but I remember Elizabeth asked me like, how does it feel? And I said, it just feels so much more quiet. Yeah. Oh, like I'm not, that's good. Yeah. I'm not thinking constantly about what other people are doing or did somebody like our podcast post or mm-hmm. do we have any new followers? Did I post something today? Did I not? Yeah. It's just, it's a lot more quiet. My brain is more quiet. I don't have as many f- variables going on in my brain. So for me personally, something I've tried to do since that experience is I've tried to actively block it out when I'm not on my phone, focus on what's in front of me. Yeah. And for me, it's my kids. Yeah. Uh, so th- that's, a little bit easier. I think for people who don't have kids, maybe the task at hand, your, your spouse, your significant other, um, some, something that's physically in front of you. Right. Um, so I, I think that that's a, a big answer to how my encouragement for everybody would just be the change. Don't wait for somebody else to do it. You know, don't, I, I can't, I don't think anybody can stand when somebody looks at you and is like, you suck and here's why, or you need to fix this and then we can be friends. Mm -hmm. Ultimatums don't help relationships just so we're crystal clear. And if I'm the first person to tell you that, then I'm sorry. Uh, But ultimatums don't promote healthy friendships or relationships in general. So be, you do it first. You be the change. Try to put out more positive than negative. And when you do that, try to give if everybody had the mindset, y'all need to go read The Go-Giver. Um, I'll include a, a link to buy the book or you can get your Audible trial and listen to it. But The Go-Giver, uh, first of all, is a really easy read. It's like a story rather than like a self-help book. But it's a story that has a lot of great principles. And it talks about how basically if everybody had the mindset of just give, 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 and then whenever somebody comes back to give you, be a grateful receiver. I think that we would live in a much better society of just everybody's winning all the time because everybody's helping everybody. I think that that'd be the the way to do that. Um, I think that also including in what you're doing, 
just telling your extended family that you love them and you care about them and you're thinking about them. If you're thinking about somebody, let them know. People can't read your mind. So um, I would say do that. And then of course, be a, a part of this podcast, be a part of the conversation that we're having and, and just make sure that you're talking about all aspects of life and not just that highlight reel. Yeah. I think my encouragement would be if you see something that is unjust or you see somebody being treated unfairly or poorly speak out. Don't be, don't be silent. You know, there's so many times that I've seen something happen and I wish that I would have been like, Hey, hey, don't talk to them like that. They don't deserve that. Or, or, Hey, you don't treat people like that. And, and I wish I would have. And it's just, you know, I think that's what it's going to, that's what it's going to take is, is, um, in, in, you know, hand in hand with be the change is be the change and then uh, make the change, you know, create the change, if you will, you know, stand up for people who, who, you know, can't stand up for themselves. Um, yeah. You know, tell the people who are being jerks, hey, you're being a jerk. Like, don't talk to people like that. That's not, yeah. you know, I, I feel like if more of that happened, people would be less apt to be jerks if, you know, the people who didn't agree with it were like, hey, you don't talk, talk to people like that. They don't deserve that. Don't be a jerk. Well, that's like the guys on Dad Gaming. I mean, I felt really supported. When yeah, no, I, I yeah, exactly. One yeah. Comment and there's already five others yeah, underneath exactly. it being like, hey, why don't you shut up? You know, so, why, why don't you stop being mean? Yeah. Like this yeah. guy's having a good day, just kicking back, relaxing and had a cool gaming spot and you're over here trying to ruin it. Yeah. Defend each other you know, uh, uh, positively, Hey, they don't deserve to be treated like that. Don't talk to them like that. You know? So I think that's what I would like to see more of. So that's my encouragement. Um, you know, be the change, speak up and uh, be a part of the conversation. Talk to us on the podcast. I don't think we've had much interaction with you guys. And, uh, frankly, it makes me kind of (laughs) sad. We've had a, we've had a couple here and there, and it's been really awesome. Um, I've gotten some feedback personally about, just the production of these podcasts yeah, and we're trying awesome. to uh, make it better constantly because frankly if you don't want to if you don't like what you're listening to even from like a volume standpoint it's going to be tough for you to keep wanting to listen yeah. and we really think that these conversations need to happen so we want to make this as enjoyable for you as possible so uh, a big thank you to uh, Nathan my brother who does audio engineering regularly um, has a history in producing records and everything also another micah micah matthews giving me a lot of good feedback my mom who actually has uh, some experience with marketing um, so we've gotten good feedback from them obviously my wife who will speak up about anything because she knows that i need to hear it and uh, i appreciate that and then both of us ben you and me we've we've definitely gotten some sandpaper out and sanded off the rough edges it's on been a journey years. my friend it's been good big so that's all I've got for this episode. Well, we'll uh, see you guys next time. Make it a make it a good one. Be blessed. Yes, sir. Take care. Bye. Hey guys, thanks so much for listening and supporting us. If you'd like to continue to support us in the MVP podcast, you can actually head over to Audible.com. The link should be in the description, and sign up for the free 30-day trial. It's our gift to you. It's awesome, it's risk-free, and guess what? You get to get all of that reading done that you've been wanting to do without any reading. All you have to do is listen to it, it's great. Also, if you like the podcast or you appreciate Micah and myself, please share with friends and family as this is for them too. We wanna reach as many people as we can. And lastly, if you wanna connect with us, you can actually reach us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at actual mvp or you can email us at actualmvp at gmail.com that is all y'all have a good one thanks